so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for only $10 a month, ladies and gents. You can get full access to my members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost effective manner possible, as well as you can come sailing with me on one of my numerous deliveries throughout the year. I've got one coming up in January from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Over to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I got one coming up in February from the BVIs to North Carolina. Lots and lots of sailing happening. And you can come along. Just sign up to Patreon. Get over to the members area. Let's get to know each other. And let's get you on a boat sailing with me. Pretty simple, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of year again. Yes, you guessed it. The new year, new me, bull shiitake. The gyms are packed, the diets have started, and the exercise has begun. But then there's me. But in all seriousness, with a brand new year comes a ton of new opportunities. It's a blank 365 page book. Every page is empty and you get to write the story. So today I want to talk about where I think the used sailboat market is going to go this year. When it's going to hit the bottom, how long it's going to last and when it's going to bounce back. We're going to take a look at some boats. We're going to chat about some boats and we're going to try to get you a solid game plan for your sailing future. If we set this up in a very step-by-step -step process, it becomes much, much easier to attain. And what better time to start than right at the beginning of the year? So let's get rolling. So first up, let's start with the X Charter sailboat market. Now, I've done numerous videos on X Charters. Love them, hate them, doesn't matter. In reality, this is where you are generally going to find the absolute best deals on the used sailboat market. Now, as far as the X Charter market is concerned, in my humble opinion, there we go again. Uh, I believe the X Charter market is currently at the lowest you are going to see it. It has already hit rock bottom, in my opinion based on the prices of a lot of these vessels. So I don't think the X charter market is going to go down much further. Now, something like this Oceanus 38, it's listed for 129. This is a boat in reality, you can probably offer 110 and pick up no problem, easy peasy, lemon breezy. And if we compare the price of some of these X charters to the private market, we can kind of start to understand the direction and how much longer until the private market absolutely tanks. Now, here on the X Charter market, we can pick ourselves up a Genoa Sun Odyssey 349 for right around 100 grand. Listed at 108, no problem. Probably get this bad boy for 95 grand. That one's in Greece. We're not going to use that. We're going to try to find one on this side of the pond if we can. Here's, oh no, that's a 419. Scratch that. All the 349s they have are over in Greece. So we're using one of these as an example. 349, fantastic vessel. Great for the solo sailor that wants to cruise around the Caribbean, island hop, coastal cruise. Do that great loop that I did in my routing video just the other day. This boat can get that done. I love it. They make a great use of space on the Genoa 349. As we cruise along here on images, someday we'll get to the interior. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe it'll be next year because people love to show pictures like this. I'm not sure 100% what kind of value an image like this is actually adding to your boat listing, but hey, there we are. We're staring at some nonsense that's making no darn sense right now. Let's try to get to the interior. Ooh, worst photos of the interior. This has a separate stand-up shower, two heads, or two cabin, one head. All right, those pictures suck. We're gonna try to get to a different one. Grease, you're not doing good. Not doing good on your photos. I'm gonna go backwards, see if we can get some better ones of the interior, you know? We're just not going to be able to get good photos of the interior from the, there we go. Decent, decent image of the inside. So we got this, you know, three, four, nine, you can pick these up for right around hundred K right now. Now over here on the used private sailboat market, all these first ones, these are those X charters that we were just looking at on the brokerage site. Now, as we scroll on down, we got to find a privately owned one, see where the price is at right here, North Carolina, 130 K. Okay, and it just goes up from there. Um, this is a brand new boat, yada, yada, yada. 2016, 140. Jeez, dude. 
get real. 152k would be a comparable one. That's in Ireland. 349. Uh, the X Charter probably has hurricane damage. This one doesn't, but it's not a $50,000 price difference just because of that. Anywho, so the cheapest one on the used private market we can find, 130k. So we're about 30k ahead of the uh, X Charter market. Now I've mentioned this boat before. It's still for sale, and it just keeps dropping in price. It had a price drop a month ago. Had a price drop a month before that. Um, so this bad boy is going to keep on coming down. Sooner than later, you are going to see the majority of these privately owned vessels, similar makes and models to the charter boats, hit this charter market price. So the 349 on the private market, it's going to get very close to this number. You're going to be able to pick up these 349s, depending on how crazy the broker is and how crazy the owner is, somewhere in the 115k range. This boat, you could probably get right now for 120. It's a little bit older than the charter, but probably doesn't have hurricane damage. The charter does, if that's a big thing for you. It's not a big thing for me. And as we scroll on down here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to swap this bad boy to, um, we'll just do uh, the United States here, just for fun. How about that? Let's do that. Uh, then we'll price a little high. All right, here we are. 173. Holy smokes, man. Maryland, you're smoking crack. Now, when you see a boat listed like this, what has happened here? Let me adjust this. Get that down. Boom. Now, when you see a boat like this, what's happened? The broker, S&J Yachts, they have simply just done a disservice to the boat owner. This boat's not going to sell at this price. This broker 100% knows it's not going to sell at that price. But the broker, it doesn't cost him any money to keep it listed for that kind of money. However, it does cost the owner money because the owner has to store this vessel, have a slip, have it on a ball, take care of it, do all those wonderful, lovely things. So listing this boat at $174,000, that's just a crime against the actual boat owner. This yacht broker has just done a horrible, horrible disservice to the owner of this vessel. Those boats don't sell for that much right now. The market's tanking and it's continuing to go down. So you're also going to see that as we go along. A new arrival listed for far too much money from Myers Yacht Sales. Again, this guy has access to all the sold prices for the 349s. They're not selling for this kind of money. They're not selling for anywhere close to that kind of money, especially not for a 2014. This broker, he's just holding on, hoping for that commission. He's going to get 10%, ladies and gents. That's 17K quick in his pocket. If he can manage to sell this boat for that, but he knows it's not going to sell for that. Same thing with all these brokers. 180, 189 grand. Get real, dude. Uh, almost 200K for this one. My man, if we go over to the charter market, uh, I can pick him up for $100,000. That's an 80 to $90,000 savings on the exact same vessel. And that, ladies and gents, is why I always say the ex charter market is just where you're going to find the better deals. Um, now, as we cruise along here, we're going to get into some different models, but I don't want to go there just yet. So with the three, four, nines, now 2019, 200 K, not a chance, man. It's not happening. And all of these brokers, these brokers all know 100% without a doubt, these vessels will not ever sell for that much money, especially not in today's current economic climate. They are just doing their boat owners a disservice. All you have to do if you like these, don't even stress about it. Sit back and just watch the prices drop. This boat ain't selling for 109. It ain't going to sell for 179. It's not going to sell for 159. If you wanted to list a 2018 Juno Sun Odyssey 349 on the private market and it's in fantastic shape, you know what you're going to get for it? Best case scenario, 149K. That's what it's worth. Not 189k. You don't have to worry about these boats selling if you have fallen in love with a boat you don't own, which you should never do. Uh, you don't have to worry about them selling. They're going to tank. Now, this person is the only person that has priced it correctly, and maybe there's something wrong with this boat. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't say much here because, you know, they never say much. Pop up. Other details. Boom. All copy and paste nonsense. Lazy broker. Brokers, you guys just do better. Um... So as we're cruising along here, don't stress about this stuff. These boats, even these overpriced ones, um, these are going to reach that 149 category. So if we pop back over to the X Charter market, another perfect example. We've got ourselves the Oceanus 38. 
129k 2017 we got a few of them uh well by a few i mean two so i'm one shy of a few we have two of them currently for sale because again the x charter market they're just pumping them out they've re they're reducing prices reduced 20k reduced 10k the beneteau oceanus 38 generally speaking 2017 and prior it's going to have some hurricane damage all you got to do call them up get the hurricane report determine what damage it has if it was repaired put back in the fleet and so on fairly easy to figure out now let's go take a look at the oceanus 38 on the private market and see how far off they are now before we keep going i want to take a moment to announce my sponsor my damn self not sponsored just awesome so here's my little commercial on the services that i offer if you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to our website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now, I do offer full consulting over here. Now, there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one on one one time consult It's on sale right now. It's only one hundred dollars. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one on one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth or we can go over several boats whatever it is you need you can grab the one-time consult now if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out you're trying to determine like offer prices things like that you can grab a consulting package and this will be three different consults so we can go over multiple boats we can touch back and forth lifetime access to the members area all of those good things this is currently on sale it's only 375 and then if you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's going to work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. That way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy. We can get you out on boats. We can look at some things. We can really, really get in depth and narrow down your search. We'll come up with offer prices. We'll go over the survey together, reduction in our prices, sea trials, all kinds of stuff. That's where you want the 24 seven consulting package. If you're really, really serious about getting on the water. Also something that helps is my spreadsheet. Now, you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only ten dollars so i published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago it's the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time so you also get that it's only ten dollars so over my web suit site fantastic place to go um i've got a little bit of apparel up here stuff like that but again what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you. So head on my website, grab a consulting package. Let's get you over in the members area. Let's get started. And back to the video we go. And holy shenanigans, just like that I'm over here on the uh, private market, we're going price low to high, easy, cheesy, lemon breezy. Now I got one down here, 125 K. We got the X charters right here. Boom. We've got one in Greece, Greece. They're generally less expensive. So the closest example of something comparable in the private market on this side of the pond is this one 195k uh if we go back it's just not going to happen you can pick them up x charter for 130k uh no problem here's one 139k scroll on down here some damage usually 2017 prior like i said this one wildly wildly overpriced this boat broker again he knows without a doubt it's not going to sell for that much it's a 2014. He's just hoping for that 20K commission. Ladies and gents, the brokers have a dog in the fight. The more money they sell the boat for, the more money they make. Um, it's just not a good look for the clients. Brokers are doing such a horrible job today. It's disgusting. The Oceanus 38, again, one of my favorite boats. Why? You have this removable bulkhead. Absolutely love it. If you don't love it, that's okay, my man. We don't have to like the same things. Get the boat that works for you, not the boat that works for me. So we're cruising back along. We're over here on the X Charter market. I can pick it up for 140K. In reality, this boat, 
best case scenario, 159k. That's what this boat should be. It's not going to sell at this price. If you fall in love with this boat, just wait. It's going to reach 159k because it's never going to sell for this much. Uh, and you'll be able to pick them up for less money. You can just snag one from the X Charter for 139k. This boat, in reality, you can pick up for probably 110 right now from the X Charter. Call them up. Look, I got 110k. I'd like to buy that boat. Boom. You're all done. Now you got yourself a fancy dancy 2017 Oceanus 38, 110k. Easy cheesy lemon breezy. So like I said, the X Charter market, it's at the bottom. Okay, and we've got room to move here. These are just the listed prices, doesn't mean anything. Do not be afraid to offend a broker. Brokers don't matter, they suck anyway. So don't be afraid to lowball them. Now we got a Geno Sanasi 419, 139K. I'm using these as an example of prices, okay? That's all that I'm doing. I'm trying to show you the market as a whole. I don't care what you think about the boat. I don't care what you think about X charters. I'm explaining to you how the used sailboat prices are working in today's current market. So get over it. Stop crying in my comments because I don't care. 2017, 419, 139K. We're going to Yacht World. We're taking a gander. Here we are, like magic. Yacht World price. Low to high. Bingo, bango. First ones, they're X charters. Bloom. We're going down. We're going down. These are all X charters. Bam. Uh, let's see. Where is our first one that's not an X Charter? It's probably going to be... Uh, let's see. These are not X Charters. This one might be. This uh, boat shed one. But uh, So it's listed for 185. We have one that's for sure not an X Charter right here. 195K. Okay. $195,000. We're pushing that quarter of a million dollar mark. You know, 419, fantastic boat. I've sailed thousands of miles on this. I have the videos on my YouTube channel. I'm surfing down 45 foot waves in this vessel doing 14 and a half knots. These boats will get you anywhere in the world that you want to go. Now, privately owned, 195K. Over here, 139K. And you can pick up this boat for like 120. So how much further do these need to drop? Well, in reality, a realistic price for the difference in the models between a privately owned vessel and an ex chartered boat, it should be about 10% under normal circumstances. So if you find, as you know, 419 on the ex charter, 139K, fantastic. You can assume, easy math, we'll call it 154K. That is what a privately owned Juno 419 should sell for. About 10% more. Not 185K, not 195K, not 202K. 10% more than the charter market. 154k is what this boat should sell for. This broker knows that. He 100% knows that. Boat Shed BVI. You know this boat ain't selling for 185. It's a little bit newer. Maybe you can get 160 for it. But stop doing your customers a disservice and listing them out of reach of people, knowing it's not going to sell and it's just going to depreciate month by month as we go. This is all copied and pasted nonsense directly from the manufacturer's website. Yacht World, I'm never clicking on your pop-up. I'm never signing up because you suck. Uh, and you told me nothing there. So when it comes to laziness, Boat Shed, you've done a fantastic job. If lazy was the goal, you have gotten first place in that race and you've achieved it. Congratulations, you dingleberry. You're doing a disservice to your customer. Back to the X Charter markets we go. Now, cruising my long, Oceanus 41. The biggest 40 footer on the market, in my opinion, the best 40 footer on the market in this price range. Now, before you start crying in my comments and say, oh my gosh, uh, Moody 41 DS is a better boat. It is absolutely, but it's not 145 K, sir. So I'm talking in this price range, the Oceanus 41, 145 K. This is a 2018. It's not going to have hurricane damage because it's 2018, 145 K sale pending. This boat probably sold for 130. That's what it should have sold for. So let's go take a look at the U at the Yacht World privately owned ones. See what people are trying to charge for the Oceanus 41 these days. And here we are. Price low to high. Boom. Cruising right along. X charters. All right, we gotta get to a privately owned one. Uh, we got a 2015. This is a good price for a privately owned one. It's on the other side of the planet. But this is about what it should be priced at. This is a privately owned Oceanus 41, 2015, 158K. Chris, how do you know that that's the right price? Because 10% more than the charters, okay? This one's a little bit older. We're right in that 10% or less range and difference in price. 
between a privately owned one and the X charters. Now, as we move along, we got Nutter Butter over here for 186. What year is this one? 2018. All right, we're looking for 2018 comparable model. 2011, 188K. You're on heroin, sir. Lay off the drugs. Drugs are bad. Stop taking them. This boat, never going to sell for that. Not in a million years. They know it. I know it. And by now, you should know it. So we look on the used charter market. Here we go. We've got another butter on a wide variety of drugs asking 295K for this boat. You can get the exact same boat for 145K from the X charter. No hurricane damage. Now you might say to yourself, but Chris, this one's probably completely outfitted and all ready to go. Nonsense, my dude. That's a $100,000 difference in price. Save that 100K. Get the X charter one that's bare bones and add all the stuff that you want to add to it. This one, I'm sure somebody probably added a bunch of stuff to this. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Registered in Delaware. Currently cruising along the East Coast of the USA. So it's just being used. So it's getting more use as we go. We scroll on down. No pop-ups. Knock it off. And we go. We're trying to look. Uh, so here's... They've done some things. All right. So we can just add all this stuff up. We got four lithium batteries, a controller, bow thruster, gearbox, blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. I got 15K worth of nonsense there. Maybe 20K. All right. We can keep on going. What do we have here? Nothing. Nothing else new. Nothing else fancy. So let's say we got 30K worth of upgrades on the privately owned one. It's not worth $100,000 more. It's worth $30,000 more. Technically 15 because all that new stuff is actually used by now. Um, so this boat has a long ways to drop. This is never, ever going to sell. Not ever. This won't sell until again, it's about 10% over this one. So what's 10% over 145? Roughly 14K. So we're looking at 135K or 155K is right about where we're going to be. Remember, 10 to 15% price discrepancy between the privately owned vessels and the X charter boats. That's what it should be. So when you're sitting there looking at uh, Yacht World and you're going, let's say that you don't have a specific model in mind. So you just go over here, you go to boats, you go boom, sailboats, bam, fantastic. Now we're cruising. We're gonna do price minimum 50K. One, two, one, two, 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 boom. We're cruising, $50,000. Price low to high. We'll show you some things. <sighs> oh, look. Price drop, price drop, price drop. That's all you're gonna see, price drops. That's it, price drop. Price drop, price drop, price drop. The boat market is absolutely tanking. It's crashing. It's going down. It's not going to rebound anytime soon. In my opinion, in the next, what month is it? It's January right now. By about June or July, we're going to see somewhere between, let's say, July and September. We're going to see the lowest part, the lowest point in the used sailboat market for privately owned vessels. At that point, these brokers cannot keep stringing their clients along with this overpriced nonsense. They know they're not going to sell. You don't need to be doing that. And in about six months, they're going to realize that. So the next six to nine months, we are going to see the lowest point in the used sailboat market. From that point, it's going to sit in what I'm going to consider and label as a doldrum period. It's just going to float around at that absolutely rock bottom price. Look at this price drop, price drop, price drop. Jeepers, creepers. It's going down. So the next six to nine months, we're going to see the absolute bottom. After that, it's going to lull around that area for about three months. Might see some additional price drops, but they're not going to be huge because the boats will be so low priced at that point. You can only drop so much before you're giving the darn thing away. The next six to nine, six to nine months, lowest point in the market. It's going to sit in the doldrums for about three months in the lollygag around there. Now, after that point, this is where things are going to get tricky. Keep in mind, it is, in fact, an election year that's going to cause the world to lose their mind. It just happens every year. People are going to be crying in the streets, doing all kinds of nonsense. Luckily for me, I live in a U.S. territory. I'm not even allowed to vote in the U.S. presidential election. I don't have that right as a U.S. citizen living in a U.S. territory. So I don't have to deal with all that nonsense, thankfully, because what an absolute mess that going to be. So it's going to lollygag around here for about three months. Now, coming the start of 2026, it can do some wild stuff. This boat market can rebound almost overnight and skyrocket. And you can watch prices jump 20, 30, 40 percent 
after a giant crash in the market like that. We've seen it before and we can absolutely see it again, or it can slowly climb back up. Um, so those are going to be the two things. That's the two options for 2026. So that's the used boat market as a whole. And I'm explaining this to you so that you can get yourself a game plan together. Now it's not only affecting mono holes. Catamarans are the exact same thing. And we are finally seeing some giant, giant price drops on catamarans. And we're also seeing some fantastic deals. Now, Leopard 40, I don't care if you like the boat. I don't care if you hate the boat. If you know anything about the boat, you know that finding a 2016 Leopard 40 for 300K is 100% unheard of. Let's go to the private market and see what they are going for right now. And here we are. We're cruising. Price. Low to high. Couple ammo. These are going to be X-Charters. Uh, okay. X-Charter, X-Charters. Ba -ba -ba. Now we can go a bit older. 2006. Look at that. 200K. What's this one? 2016. Not a comparable boat. But <laughs> while we're here, a 2006 Leopard 40 for 200K, you're in mono hole range territory. Again, I don't care if you like the boat. Hate it. I don't doesn't I don't have any feelings on the matter. Um your opinion on that boat matters to be about as much as my opinion on how fast the grass grows. It just doesn't matter to me. So look at the price. Super, super cheap. We're in monohole territory. Now we're up into the years we're talking about. These are X charters. So we gotta get to a privately owned one, if we can even find a privately owned one. Normally you can't, because these are all X charters. Why are they all X charters? Leopards are popular in the X-Charter market. Here's one. This one probably... Oh, nope. That's even a charter boat. Um, Charter, 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 charter. I mean, here's a 2018 Leopard 40 for 421K. Here's a 2016 one for 300K. $140,000 difference, ladies and gents. Get real. X-Charter boats are the best prices in town. It's just a matter of finding one that's going to work for you. But when you compare it to the good old privately owned market, keep in mind, privately owned vessels should be, if you're considering a monohull, 10 to 15% more than next charter boats. There's no reason for that price discrepancy other than a delusional mindset thinking that a privately owned vessel is somehow better. Generally speaking, privately owned vessels are worse because boat owners don't know how to take care of their own boats. But 10 to 15% price discrepancy between a privately owned monohull and a X charter monohull. That is where the price should be. That's where the price is normally at under normal circumstances. And if you're a boat broker, like all these people are, you can pull up the sold listings and you know, that's exactly what they should be selling for in the world of monoholes. Now, if you're talking catamarans, things get a bit wonky in the world of catamarans because catamarans, they're expensive. They're really expensive. I don't have a half a million dollars to spend on a boat. Are you kidding me? I don't have half a million dollars to spend on a house. But the difference between a privately owned catamaran and an ex-chartered catamaran, if we're talking the same year comparable, 20 to 25%. That is the percentage discrepancy you should see on a privately owned catamaran versus an ex-chartered catamaran. When those numbers get closer, and if and when those numbers meet, you will be able to know we are at the bottom. As soon as you start to see 5% price discrepancies between a privately owned monohull and an ex-chartered monohull, and when you start to see a 10% discrepancy in a privately owned catamaran and an ex-chartered catamaran, you will then know we are 100% at the bottom of the market and that should happen in the next six to nine months and it's going to sit there until 2026 when things are going to go absolutely nuts they're going to go crazy now in 2026 who knows what's going to happen with it being an election year and all this nonsense that's going to happen the boat prices might continue to just sit stagnant um it's just it's too far out to tell but as far as this year We've got it pretty dialed in, ladies and gents. These are where things should be at. These are the price discrepancies that you should be finding. They're the ones that you're going to see in the next six to nine, 
six to nine months, like I said. So make sure that you're prepared for what is coming and you're ready to roll if you're trying to get on the water this year. I think I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. Now, I am a delivery captain. That is what I do full time and it is how I make a living. So what that means is that on any given month throughout the year, I will sail somewhere in the neighborhood around 2,000 to 4,000 nautical miles, depending on my deliveries for that particular month. Now, this gives me a unique opportunity to do a lot of things. Number one, I get a ton of actual sailing miles under my belt every single month, and my nautical miles travel just keeps growing because, again, it's what I do for a living. This also allows me to get on a wide variety of sailboats, more than just about anyone else, because again, everyone is buying a different vessel. They need to sail them in different conditions from different parts of the world back to their home port. So this gives me, again, another unique perspective of actually being able to spend a couple of weeks on a wide variety of sailboats throughout the year, giving me a pretty good idea of a huge variety of boats, how they're going to handle, how they are laid out how user-friendly they will be for new sales versus experienced sailors, and so on. So it gives me a really, really good inside look at a lot of these vessels, which is how I can make so many videos talking about hundreds of different vessels. I've actually sailed them thousands of miles on these deliveries, and I can share that information with you 100% free here on YouTube. Now, in addition to being a full time delivery captain, I am also a sailboat purchasing consultant. So what in the world does that mean? Well, when it comes to buying yourself a new to you fancy dancy used sailboat, there are a million pitfalls, hurdles involved in the buying process. My goal as a sailboat buying consultant is to help you avoid them all and walk you through every step of buying a used sailboat from start to finish, whether you are a complete novice on a sailboat and have never stepped foot on a sailboat or you're an experienced sailor out there but you're buying a boat and you're not a hundred percent sure what to get so as a sailboat buying consultant i walk you through every single step of the process all the way from the very beginning of knowing absolutely nothing about sailboats so we will determine together over time what sailboat is going to work the best for you and your needs, not my needs and not the sailboats that I like, but getting you the right vessel that is going to work for you. Then from there, we will go on to figure out the correct offer price based on the current market conditions for that vessel. We're going to go ahead, determine offers. We're going to set up surveys. We're going to get the survey back. We're going to readjust our offer. We're going to get your insurance handled, set up your delivery. Get your first year of sailing planned out for you so it's really nice, comfortable, and easy and make things a seamless transition from living on land to living on a sailboat. Now, a lot of people have no idea what is actually involved in a sailboat and it is nothing like buying a used car. You don't get to run around and test out different sailboats and go and sail them in the ocean. You can't do that on sailboats for the most part. There are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, you don't get to test drive these things. So we've got to get the correct surveyor, make sure we go in depth on the survey, get our offer adjusted based on what comes back on the survey. We then have to go, we have to get you insurance, get you set up with marinas, plan your routes out for your first year. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff involved in buying a used sailboat. Now, this is why I generally like to work with people as long as possible. So if I work with you for a year or more before we actually buy a sailboat for you, that's fantastic. We can really make sure that we have things dialed in properly so that you don't wind up buying the wrong boat and then just traveling around the world, fixing your boat in tropical locations only to sell it just a couple of years later. That is no fun for anyone involved. And I hate seeing people give up on sailing because they purchased the wrong sailboat. Now, we can see this play out all over YouTube all of the time. People buy the wrong boat, then they become a little bit successful, get themselves a totally different boat. But the whole time they were on that wrong boat, they were telling you how great that wrong boat was. 
until they actually had some money and then they just went and bought a catamaran because that happens a lot. And I'm super happy for those guys, pumped for them. But my goal is avoiding that whole first five year scenario of you buying the wrong sailboat. So being a sailboat buying consulting also gives me another unique insight into the world of purchasing a used sailboat. Now, over the last few years, I have helped somewhere around a hundred different people buy their sailboat, whether it was their first sailboat or their 10th sailboat. So again, this has given me a very unique inside perspective into the actual used sailboat market over the last several years. And I've been involved in the purchase of so many sailboats from start to finish as a sailboat buying consultant that I've got a really, really unique perspective on it. And because I also have a YouTube presence, this gives me a huge audience. So I have a much larger audience than your typical broker, and I'll be involved in more boat deals throughout the year than most brokers out there because I have a huge audience on YouTube and I'm helping hundreds of people buy sailboats, just around a hundred or something in the last few years. So not hundreds, but you know what I mean. And that's an absolute ton of sailboat purchases to be involved in. So my videos are based off of what I'm actually doing for a living. This is what I'm seeing day to day, week to week, and month to month firsthand in the world of sailing. So this isn't some half cocked, I need YouTube views marketing gimmick. I get no benefit from you saving money and buying yourself a boat for less money. That in no way benefits me at all financially. I don't make money off of you buying a sailboat for more money or less money. My goal is always just to save you as much money as possible. My goal is not to get you to spend more money. So if you watch my videos and pay attention and take some of my advice and you can save some money, that's fantastic. That costs me nothing to do other than time making these YouTube videos to help you. But I get no financial benefit in a random YouTuber watching, saving his money and getting the right boat for less money. This isn't some little gimmick. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm simply sharing with you what I'm seeing every single day of my life based off of what I do for a living. Now, I don't do YouTube for a living. I make these videos simply to help other people get on the water. I don't do it for a living. People often go, oh, look, you have less subscribers. Of course I have less subscribers. My audience is a very specific audience and it's people looking to buy a used sailboat. I'm not a sailing vlogger. I don't travel around on a boat, pointing the camera at myself and showing you white sand beaches and uh, making things dramatic that are not dramatic. I'm a delivery captain and a sailboat buying consultant that happens to make YouTube videos. If you want to watch my videos and take some tips and you can save yourself money, then that helps me just feel better as a human being, knowing that I'm helping other people in one way or another get out there on the water. Now, with being a delivery captain, this also gives me a huge opportunity to invite other people to come sailing with me all over the world on these deliveries. On any given month, I've got one or two deliveries somewhere in the world sailing 2,000 miles or more, generally speaking. Most of my trips are a week or two long. The average is about two weeks and about 2,500 nautical miles. That's kind of my average every month for uh, doing my deliveries. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little bit less. But because I have that opportunity, I'm also able to offer my members the ability to come and sail with me and it costs them nothing except their travel and their food. That's it. So how do you come sailing with me? Now, a lot of people ask me that question as well, and it's really, really simple. All you have to do is go over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for consulting. Now, the consulting members, they always get first crack at these deliveries, and the deliveries generally fill up fast, but because everybody has their own lives and stuff, there's almost always room on all of my deliveries to get someone on the boat and come sail with me. Now, if you compare that cost to something else in the world of sailing, the only way for the average individual to get on a sailboat is usually to run out and charter a sailboat somewhere in a tropical location. That's going to generally run you about $5,000. If you're not experienced, the charter company is going to make you hire a captain for that week that you're on the boat. 
And now you're going to beat about $7,000 for a week of sailing on a sailboat and trying to learn how to sail. You can do that right through me for a thousand bucks. Super, super simple because I'm not in it for the money. I'm just trying to get you guys on the water. So if you're ever interested in coming sailing with me, that's how you do it. You sign up for consulting. I get you over on the members area. We start chatting and you come sailing with me on a delivery. I have numerous people on my members area that have no desire to ever buy a sailboat. They just want to come sailing with me a couple times a year, three or four times a year, whatever works in their schedule. And once you're a consulting member, you have the opportunity to do that. So again, my entire goal with my whole YouTube channel, it's just to get people on the water. Now, because I'm a delivery captain and because I can take so many people sailing, I have a huge insight into the world of the used sailboat market. Also being a sailboat buying consultant, I am part of hundreds of deals on any given year. It's generally right around 100 boat deals a year that I'm a part of. So I'm dealing with numerous different vessels in numerous different locations, hundreds of different brokers um, and things like that. So I have a, a giant, giant insight into the world of sailing, how to get on the water, how to learn how to sail, how to buy a boat, and how to do all of those things in the most cost-effective way possible. Now, last week, I lost a very, very dear friend of mine, and I'm just going to put another tribute at the end of this video to him because he truly meant the world to me. You know, Chris is going to make a, a video for, uh, for more for daddy, a minimum for, price. Huh? I don't know. Do you think he's going to make a comment about it? Now, without that minimum price I just mentioned, I don't know how to get to the website yet, but we'll see. Nonsense. That's not what we want. So we need to put in some sort of minimum price. Do you think he's going to do a rest of But watching Chasing Latitudes is definitely putting something normal in the house right now. Is as you can see, it pulls up a bunch of stuff that's not a camera. Like a so we're gonna get a few here again, instead of background music. Do you think he put a a five second uh, ABC clan sadly passed away? Do you think he put that in one of his videos? Or, um, he said that he did mention it, and I don't know how to pull it up. Should we? What? Are, what? So today is a very different kind of video that I've never had to make on my channel and I hoped that I never would have to make. Um, it is with an absolute unbelievable amount of sadness that we lost an absolute legend in my community. Timothy Fox, also known as ABC Gang on YouTube and Boatless Guy on YouTube. Uh, passed away December 27th. He was an absolute amazing husband and father and a fantastic member and contributor to my members area and my YouTube channel. And I'm still in absolute shock that this has happened to him. And so I just wanted to make a little tribute today to let people know how much I truly cared about him and how amazing of a man that I thought he was. When tomorrow starts without me and I'm not there to see if the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me. I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you. And each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand and said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But as I turned to walk away, a tear fell from my eye. For all my life I'd always thought I didn't want to die. I had so much to live for, 
So much left yet to do. It seemed almost impossible that I was leaving you. I thought of all the yesterdays, the good ones and the bad. I thought of all the love we shared and all the fun we had. If I could relive yesterday, just even for a while, I'd say goodbye and kiss you, and maybe see you smile. But then I fully realized that this could never be, for emptiness and memories would take the place of me. And when I thought of worldly things I might miss come tomorrow, I thought of you, and when I did, my heart was filled with sorrow. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home. When God looked down and smiled at me from his great golden throne, he said, this is eternity, and all I've promised you. Today, your life on earth is past, but here, life starts anew. I promise no tomorrow, but today will always last. And since each day is the same, there's no longing for the past. You have been so faithful, so trusting, and so true. Though there were times you did some things you knew you shouldn't do. But you have been forgiven, and now at last, you're free. So won't you come and take my hand, and share my life with me? So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. Now, Tim had just started a new job, and he leaves behind his wife and young daughter. Um, there has been a GoFundMe set up by one of the family friends, and I'm going to go ahead and link it down below. And if you would like to, it would mean the world to me if you could contribute to their GoFundMe, even if it's a dollar. It would truly help out the family, and I would sincerely appreciate it. <laughs> 